Hello, everyone, and welcome to the American Heritage School Virtual College Fair. We thank you all for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Um, students and families, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Uh, your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you throughout the presentation. This is just one of multiple different sessions happening tonight, so please be sure to sign up for any additional sessions um, later in the evening. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week um, at the same website where you registered. And with that being said, I'd like to now turn it over to our presenters. Um, we're going to go to our first school, um, and that is the University of Aberdeen. Hi there everyone, um, I'll just get my PowerPoint quickly up and I'll get started here for you. Um, so first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Frances McBean and I work as uh, one of the international recruitment officers um, and I will be going through the PowerPoint just now for you. If I can get it started, here we go. Um, so Aberdeen is located in the northeast of Scotland, if you're not familiar um, with where we are. We were founded in 1495 and we are one of the oldest um, universities in the English speaking world. We have about 15,000 students um, and 32% of our students are international from over 130 nationalities uh, with a growing US student population as well. We're ranked in the top 200 um, and the top 30 in the UK. So um, we've got a couple of rankings there in case you're interested in that. In terms of our schools, we have 12 schools at the university um, and we've just popped a couple of them there to show you the, the variety of ones that we have on offer. So School of Divinity, um, History, Philosophy, Social Sciences, Biological Sciences and Psychology. So we are quite a traditional university, but we do also have some modern um, courses as well. So things like music and modern languages as well. So Aberdeen um, is the third largest city in Scotland. Um, so we have a population of 230,000 people. So it might be quite small, depending on where about you're based in the world. Um, but being a slightly smaller city, um, I think is quite a good thing because we're very, very safe. We're ranked the safest city in the UK. Um, and it's a very sort of homely feel in terms of the campus and also the city itself. The beach is just a 10 minute walk from the campus, which you'll be able to see in the top picture there in the city highlights. Uh, we've highlighted the campus and you can see how short it is to the beach itself. And we also have an international airport, which is um, about 15 minutes drive away from the campus itself. Um, and this has flights from London, Amsterdam and Paris taking you further afield. So the campus itself is a very historic campus as we were obviously founded in 1495, but we have got a lot of modern buildings on the campus as well. So we're located in the historic district of Old Aberdeen, which is about a 20 minute walk from the modern city centre. We also have our medical science campus, which is based at ARI, which is Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, which is the picture on the top here of the slide. And this has four research institutes. The picture at the bottom here is our Sir Duncan Rice Library, which was built in 2012. Um, and it's a really stunning building and um, it's a great place for the students. There's a lot of individual study spaces and um, group project spaces and also all of the um, sort of like facilities that you would need for your studying um, and plenty of sort of relaxing spaces as well. So there's a nice cafe there and we also have a museum inside the um, library as well. Our Sports Village and Aquatic Centre is just across the road from the main campus um, based in Old Aberdeen and this was built as well just around about the same time as the library. So it's a really striking building um, and it's got Olympic standard diving boards and swimming pools inside um, and state of the art gym and fitness equipment as well. So in terms of the undergraduate study, um, it's four years long in Scotland, so it is similar to the American system. Um, and we want to highlight is the, the main thing for us is the flexibility that you have with your degree. So your first and second year is when you choose your major, so the, the sort of topic that you want to study, but you do get to choose alongside it an additional um, one to five subjects. And this can be in any sort of area that you would like it to be. Um, as long as it works in the timetable, then you can choose to do that as your um, additional subjects. When it comes to your third and fourth year, that's really then when you focus in on your major. 
We also have the flexibility of being able to do a single honour or a joint honours degree. So, for example, you could maybe do history with politics. Um, so you're coming out with a joint honours degree there, which can be quite good when you're maybe thinking about your future career and having a few more opportunities there um, and maybe opening a few more doors when it comes to looking for your job. In terms of the application process, you apply through Common App or UCAS. Um, and we do also have just a wee note there in case you do have any questions regarding testing. Obviously, with COVID at the moment, there's a few things that have changed, but you're more than welcome just to get in touch with us um, and I'd be happy to answer them directly. So scholarships and funding. Um, we have a couple of them highlighted just here. They are all on our website as well, which is a good place to look. Um, but again, my email is at the end of the PowerPoint. So if you'd like to email me, because um, this might be something a wee bit more private that you'd like to talk about, then you're welcome to do so. But just to highlight the North American Merit Scholarship and also the Finlay Walker Scholarship, um, and we've got FAFSA approved as well there. So it's just the highlights there, but any questions, you can just message um, me in an email or you can double check our website as well. So our student life and support is a really big thing for a lot of the universities. Um, so it's just to highlight here that we have 55 student um, sports clubs and also over 100 different student societies. So no matter what you're interested in, uh, whether it be something quite niche or quite quirky, then you're going to be able to do that at university. Um, if you maybe have an interest in a particular type of music or a particular type of art, again, you can continue to sort of sort of feed that um, creativity um, whilst you're studying at university. Our Hillhead Student Village is our accommodation block and this is located just a 10 minute walk from the campus and this has 24 hour um, security and support staff as well. So if you need something as simple as a light bulb needing changed in the kitchen, you can go and ask the staff there or if you're just needing to talk to someone in confidence, you can do so there as well. We've got our AUSA, which is our students uh, society. So they have great social media webs, uh, sort of social media platforms. So I would definitely recommend having a wee look there. Um, and we've got a career service, which students have access to even after they've graduated. So you can get help for your, um, maybe writing a CV, applying for a part-time job whilst you're at university. And even once you've graduated, you can come back and make use of the um, career service here. And this is the last slide here, just with my email address. So if you'd like to get in touch with me, then please feel free to do so. I'd be happy to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we're going to go over to our next school, and that is going to be Clemson University. All right. Hi, everyone. We're so glad that you could join us tonight. My name is Morgan Rutland, and I am an admissions counselor at Clemson, and I am also a proud alum of this university. I want to kick us off with some admissions information, and then we will talk about just some general things about the university as well. Here on this first picture, you can see a big snapshot of our university. We are in Clemson, South Carolina, and what we refer to as the upstate, and it is more of a rural atmosphere for a college campus. Our campus is completely walkable and you could get from one end of campus to the other in about 10 to 15 minutes. So here you can see our admissions dates and deadlines. They do stay the same every single year. So our application is always going to open on August 1st and we don't participate in early action or early decision, but we do have a priority notification deadline. What that means is every student that applies by December 1st and gets all other information in by December 31st is guaranteed to receive a decision from our office in mid-February and you're automatically considered for all of our merit scholarship. So that's why those dates are really important to keep in mind, but you are welcome to apply all the way through May 1st for fall admission. And I do like to note that it is really common for the majority of our students not to hear back until February the biggest bulk of decisions for Clemson was just released last week for our seniors. So it is a little later than you'll see some schools. So how do you apply to Clemson? We have a couple of different options and we don't have a preference for one of these over the other. There's the Clemson specific application and we are on the coalition and the common app as well. After you submit that application, you will want to submit official standardized test scores from the testing agency, and we do super score both SAT and ACT. 
this past year, we did have that test optional component similar to a lot of schools, but the university has not made an official decision on if we will remain test optional for next year. But as soon as we have that information, I promise we will update you right away. Lastly, the only other thing you have to submit in a, is a official high school transcript from your school counselor. An application, test scores, and transcript are the only things you have to submit. However, we will gladly look at any other material you include with your application. So from all of that information, what are the major things we're looking for? Clemson uses a holistic review process, which means we're going to look at everything like I mentioned, but these are some of the top indicators um, for students' admission. So obviously, one of the top things we take into consideration is going to be your high school work. So from that transcript, looking at your GPA, class rank if it's offered, and then the rigor of courses based off what is offered at your high school. We like to see that a student is taking the initiative and challenging themselves with some honors, AP or IB or dual enrollment, and we don't have a preference for any of those over the other. We'll take a look at those test scores like we talked about. We'll take a look at any of that additional material you include. So that could be letters of recommendation, a resume, uh, different unique experiences that you have um, had that you want to include in the application. And then lastly, something unique to Clemson's process is we do direct admit to major. So on your application, you will be asked to choose two choices of major. And I would strongly encourage students to put two different things. For whatever reason, if we cannot admit you to your first choice, we can still review you for admission under that second choice of major. And here you can see a snapshot of what our freshman profile looks like. This is based off the students who are in their freshman year at Clemson right now. So we do have about 20,000 undergraduate students on our campus, and each year we enroll a freshman class of about 4,000 see the middle 50% for test scores. SAT is a 1260 to a 1410 and then ACT is going to be about a 28 to a 32. Now I want to transition into just some general information about Clemson. Here you can see a good snapshot of our academics. We have over 80 different majors and degree programs for students to choose from. And at the bottom here, you can see our 10 most popular majors. And while Clemson does fall on that medium to large size university, we do try to keep our class sizes as small as possible. So the average class size is gonna be about 30 to 32. And that could be even smaller as you continue on and become an upperclassman in some of those major specific classes. We're also really thankful to have one of the top career services in the country, and they provide many different resources for our students. At Clemson, we strongly encourage every student to take that initiative and get that hands-on learning experience, whether that be through internships, co-ops, or study abroad. You also want to know that this college degree you are working so hard for is going to mean something when you transition into job searching and jumping into that job market. Clemson has a 96% employment rate, and what that means is 96% of Clemson graduates six months after graduation are either already employed or they're continuing their education in graduate school, medical school, things like that, and students um, coming from Clemson are slightly higher than the national average to be admitted into those programs like medical school and law school. We do also have an honors college and it is a separate application process. So you'll want to apply to Clemson admissions first and then complete that honors college application. They do have um, some additional materials that are required, including a couple of essay questions, but typically students find out about the same time as they do for admission if they've been accepted to the honors college as well. You'll also find that Clemson students are very involved on our campus. We have over 550 clubs and organizations, including Greek life and club and intramural sports. We have over 19 division one athletic teams, and we're very thankful to be right in between the Blue Ridge Mountains and Lake Hartwell. And lastly, I just want to uh, mention just a couple of these Clemson traditions. So we would not be the great school that we are today without the long standing traditions that we have. And a couple of those might be Solid Orange Friday 
or getting your Clemson ring close to around graduation time. Here you can see just a couple of virtual opportunities that we have, whether that be virtual campus tours held almost every day, multiple times throughout the day, or virtual office hours where you can speak one-on-one -on -one with an admissions counselor. Thanks for joining. And if you have any questions for Clemson, make sure and put that in the Q&A. Thank you very much. We're gonna move on over to our third university and that is the University of East Anglia. Thank you very much. Let me just quickly share my screen view one moment. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, so thank you. My name is Graham Weiss um, and I'm an international officer working for the University of East Anglia located in the UK. Um, so UEA, as we're better known, is a research intensive and it's a campus based university. We are at UEA, we're home to just over 16,000 students, of which around 4,000 are international students. So it's a very multicultural and a very diverse and welcoming campus at UEA. So just to quickly highlight some of our key achievements, I'm not going to spend a long time going through rankings because, you know, every university can go through rankings and talk about the areas where they're strongest. But just to quickly highlight to you here, uh, UEA is ranked in the top 25 in the UK and in the top 200 in the world. So we're a very well respected university, both nationally, but also internationally as well. Um, just one other one to highlight to you here is the gold and the teaching excellence framework. Um, so UEA was ranked gold um, for the quality of our teaching teaching in the UK. Obviously there's three awards and only about 20 universities received the gold award. So again, just another really good indicator of the excellent teaching that takes place at UEA. So this is our campus. So as I said, um, we're a campus space university. So all of our fantastic facilities are located on this site in this image you can see here. Um, so that's including our accommodation. Um, and international students are actually guaranteed accommodation within their first year of studying at UEA. So students have the choice from all of our great kind of options, which are very affordable um, on our campus. The other key kind of areas of our campus, we have a sports park. Um, so it's a 30 million pound sports um, facility with indoor and outdoor sports, which students have access to. We also have a very active student union at UEA with over 200 different clubs and societies that students can join. And that's located right in the heart of our campus. Um, and right next to student union is our LCR, which is a live music venue. Um, we've had Ed Sheeran play here, Coldplay play here for So again, really great our music taking place on our campus as well as sport. But it also has all of the kind of fantastic amenities and um, facilities that you'd expect at a UK university. We have a medical centre, a dentist, we have a post office, we have a shop, bank, all of those kind of uh, facilities that you'd really need um, when you're studying at university. So where we're located is within the city of Norwich. So you may not have heard of Norwich, but it is a, a beautiful city located in the east of the UK. So just to highlight where we are roughly, so we're just under two hours um, to London by train in the east of the UK. Um, we're actually located about 40 minutes, 30 minutes to the nearest beach. Um, so it's a, it's a what we class as a coastal city. Um, but we, you know, Norwich is a great city. Norwich is a very much a blend of the old and the new. Um, so we have our historical castles and cathedrals. We also have brand new shopping centers and cinemas as well. And it's a very student friendly city as well. Um, we actually like it known as people one of the safest cities in England in the UK um, and you know that's just a reflection of the how welcoming the people are in Norwich not just to kind of outsiders but also to international students as well and again a very low cost of living in Norwich in comparison to cities like London it's very expensive whereas Norwich is a very affordable option to live in. So one of our other facilities that I like to mention on um, our campus at UEA is the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts. So the Sainsbury Centre is a, an art gallery. Um, it has art exhibitions from all over the world, but it also, you may recognise it, um, as it doubles up as the Avengers headquarters in the Avengers films. Um, so we've had the Avengers on our campus filming a few years ago. Um, so it's something I like to mention, it, and it's, you know, it's pretty cool to say that you may have studied at university, which is also the headquarters of the Avengers. So just to highlight a few less exciting things, but also much, much more important is our entry requirements. Um, and what I'd say with our entry requirements is that we operate very much a bespoke process. So if you were interested in applying um, and you weren't sure if you made the grades, the best thing you can do is to reach out to myself or, or one of my colleagues at UEA. We can go through that with you, um, no problem at all. But typically speaking, um, we look for IBs or A-levels. Um, we look for the high school graduate diploma and AP exams. For, for APs, we look typically for three to five um, APs. 
Some subjects will require to, to take an interview and um, all of our applications are made on UCAS. Um, but any questions regarding entry requirements, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, so just to briefly touch on our undergraduate program. So at UBA and, and typically speaking for, for most of the UK, they are three years in length. Um, the only way they'd be longer is if you set to the year abroad or a placement year option, that would then make it four years. Or if you were doing a program like medicine or pharmacy, which is slightly longer. Um, our courses are very flexible and not, I know not as flexible as they are in the US, but they are very flexible. We have a very um, uh, common first year in most of our programs where you'll study all the key core modules. And as you move forward into your second and third year, you'll then start to choose the modules that interest you most to, to really kind of help you to um, tailor the degree to your own area or specific interests. Um, so as I said earlier, it's very affordable at UBA. Uh, prices range per year for three years, uh, around 17 to 21,000 um, pounds per year. And um, with lots of kind of great scholarships available, which I'll briefly touch on shortly. Um, we operate a blend blended learning approach of up to about 20 hours per week of contact time. So by contact time, we mean um, lectures, cinemas, seminars, not cinemas, um, workshops and lab work. Um, and the rest of the time is for independent study. Um, so just to highlight a few actually little bits of information for you now. So we do have a very generous scholarship scheme for students in the US. Um, so as well as having guaranteed scholarships, we also have an application based scholarship um, for around four thousand to eight thousand pounds per year of study. Um, accommodation costs range roughly from about eighty pounds to one hundred and sixty pounds. And we are FAFSA accredited as well. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. So um, if you had any questions, you can obviously email me. My email address is here. Or feel, feel free to send some messages in the chat and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. But yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to move over to our fourth university, and that is Temple. You. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Um, hello, everyone. My name is Monica Sobolewski, and I'm actually the Regional Assistant Director of Admissions here at Temple University. Temple is a top-ranked public research institution based in North Philadelphia. As Philadelphia's public institution, Temple University was really founded on humble roots, and our goals still remain the same today. And that's really to provide all of our students um, access to a world-class education at an affordable price. Temple is a national leader not only in education, but also research and healthcare as well. Temple is a very large school, but we do have that small campus feel and atmosphere. So campus is really only about a mile wide by a mile long and kind of just really a big square. And this is really going to provide our students that campus atmosphere within um, the, that large city setting. Uh, we have about 27,000 undergraduate students on campus ac ac across campus, um, 17 schools and colleges, 12 of those are at the undergraduate level and five of those are at a professional level school. And they include dental, law, uh, medical pharmacy and a podiatry school as well. We have over 150 different major undergraduate majors for our students to choose from when they're enrolling at Temple. Some popular majors of our incoming freshmen um, enroll into some are business programs, uh, psychology, biology, media studies and production, journalism, and then two of our most competitive programs that we have on campus would be our nursing program as well as our um, musical theater program. If you are admissible to Temple University, then you are admissible to most of our programs, I'd like to say. Select majors within our Tyler School of Art and Architecture will also require for you to submit a portfolio and then select majors within our Boyer College of Music and Dance, as well as our musical theater program and our theater, film, and media arts will also require an audition through your admission process as well. We have over 350 different clubs and organizations for our students to get involved in. And this is gonna help you, you know, make more connections, not only socially, but also professionally at your time at Temple. We are, uh, we have 18 div different division, um, NCAA Division I athletic teams, and we participate in the American Athletic Conference. Our athletics really provide our students a huge sense of school spirit, whether that be going to a football game at the Lincoln Financial Field, which is also where the Philadelphia Eagles play, or to one of our basketball games at home on campus at the Leah Cora Center. Research is a really large part of our identity at Temple. We are known as something called an R1 Carnegie Classification Research Institution. We are one of three institutions in Philadelphia that uh, receive that distinction. Many of our students are participating in research, even at the undergraduate level, through something called our Diamond Research Scholars Program. Um, and this is across any school or college that we offer at Temple, not just your typical STEM field. And then I think one of our greatest resources that we have to offer our students at Temple is our location to the city of Philadelphia. We have 18 
Fortune 500 companies within an hour's drive of, to, of Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia is also a prominent hub for not only arts and culture, but also history, sports, dining and entertainment, transit and travel, as well as education. Uh, we have two subway stops on campus that's going to allow for easy access to not only to internships, but jobs and networking events, and just also being able to partake in events throughout the entire city and really be able to immerse yourself in the rich culture that Philadelphia does have to offer, especially food. If you're a foodie, Philadelphia is a great place to be. Experiential learning and professional development really help our students grow it at their time at Temple. The Philadelphia experience allows our students some free or discounted tickets across city landmarks where our professors will also utilize city landmarks as part of their curriculum as well. Temple enrolled its most diverse class this past fall semester where 41% of our incoming class identified as a student of color. We owls are definitely everywhere. In addition to our main campus in North Philadelphia, we have two international campuses, one in Japan and one in um, Rome. Our studying abroad or studying away domestically is really popular amongst our students at Temple. Our Japan campus is actually the oldest foreign university within Japan. Students can actually spend all four years on our Japan campus and never set foot on our main campus in Philadelphia or do that more traditional route of studying abroad for a semester or summer away. Then our Rome campus, we have a brand new first year entry program and that's where our students attend our Rome campus for the very first year and then transition back to our main campus in North Philadelphia to finish out the remainder of their degree. Um, in addition to, uh, to that, we also have a really strong alumni network consisting of over 340,000 different alumni across all 50 states and 143 different countries. So Temple is a common app explosive school. We do have two deadlines. Our um, early action deadline is November 1st every year, and you will hear a decision no later than January 10th. And then our regular decision, decision deadline is February 1st. If there are any seniors sitting here, we have extended that deadline to March 1st. Decisions for our regular decision are on a rolling basis. So you'll usually hear your decision about six to eight weeks after you submit all your, um, you've submitted your application. The required items for a completed application to Temple University are the common application, this is also including and determining if you're going to apply with your test scores or if you're going to apply test optional. We've been test optional since 2015 and we will continue to do so. Uh, the, the second thing would be self-reporting your transcript. You will complete your self-reported transcript on your TU portal account that you will create after you have submitted your application through the Common App. Uh, you will get an email from us asking you to go ahead and create that account. That is where you will self-report your transcript and once you've completed that, then your application to Temple is fully completed. And then the last thing would be your application fee, unless you qualify for a fee waiver. So a first year student that is applying to Temple um, on average has a profile of a 3.4 GPA. I'm not sure why this stopped. Um, has a, an average profile of a 3.48 GPA. Those that have admitted uh, submitted test scores, 1206 for SAT, 27 for ACT. We super score SAT, but not ACT. Um, so if on, at, once you apply, you're automatically considered for three things, merit scholarship, acceptance, as well as the honors program. If you see Temple University, University potentially being the right fit for you, I definitely encourage you to visit campus or register for one of our campus tours. If you have any questions, definitely drop your question in our Q&A. It was nice to meet you all. Thank you very much, Monica. And we are going to go over to our last um, college of the night, and that is Mount Holyoke. Thank you. All right, share my screen. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Lakia Newland, and I serve, I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as Dean of Admission at Mount Holyoke College. Uh, I'm also the first reader for all applications from the state of Florida and from the nation of Kenya. <clears throat> Mount Holyoke is located in South Hadley, Massachusetts, and was founded in 1837 as the first of the Seven Sisters, or the then equivalent to the all-male Ivy League. In 1915, Mount Holyoke gathered with three other women's colleges, Smith, Vassar, and Wellesley, to have a discussion about promoting high-quality women's education that would be equal to what was offered to men. This group expanded in 1926 when Barnard, Bryn Mawr, and Radcliffe were invited to participate and thus the Seven Sisters were formed, a group of elite women's only colleges parallel to their male Ivy League counterparts. In 1969, Vassar became a co-educational institution and by 1999, Radcliffe was absorbed by Harvard University. 
The remaining sisters include Barnard in New York, Bryn Mawr in Pennsylvania, Smith just down the road from us in Northampton, and Wellesley on the eastern side of Massachusetts. Did you know that just 2% of women graduate from women's colleges, but 20% of women in US Congress and 30% of Business Week's list of rising women attended a women's college? Mount Holyoke, for example, graduates the greatest number of women who go on to earn doctorates in STEM fields. And that's of all colleges and universities, not just women's colleges. The Princeton Review ranks our faculty as the best in the nation. And we agree. We think our faculty are, are also awesome and that they're a huge part of what makes academics so excellent at Mount Holyoke. So let me tell you a little bit more about us. We have about 2,200 undergraduate students a nine to one student to teacher ratio and an average classroom size of about 20 students. There goes my son. More than 85% of the classes you take at Mount Holyoke will have fewer than 20 students and about 11% will have fewer than 10. 36% of our students major in the STEM fields, 36% in the social sciences and 28% in the humanities. As you can see, we have, over four, we have 48 majors including self-design, and about a third of our students will double major. And you have a list of our most popular as well. So some things that make Mount Holyoke unique, first and foremost, would be our spirit of engagement. Mount Holyoke has lots to do. I guarantee you that you will be busy when you aren't in class. But the best part about our club and organization system, similar to what you just heard about majors and minors, is that we, if we don't have a club or an organization you want, you can create your own. So we have over 100 registered now, over 100 registered clubs and orgs, 14 varsity sports, a golf course, and a nationally ranked equestrian facility. In addition to academic excellence and a spirit of engagement, Mount Holyoke is diverse, global, and inclusive. 26% of our domestic students are people of color. 17% of our students are first in their family to go on to college and 45 states are represented among that student body, that domestic student body. 28% of our students are international and they represent 69 countries from all over the world. Now Holyoke has the most liberal of the admission policies among the remaining seven sister schools. We accept applications from students who identify as female, non-binary, and or transgender male or female. If you can't remember all of that, just remember that the only students we don't admit are men who are assigned male at birth and still identify as male now. So another unique thing about Mount Holyoke is that we are part of a five college consortium. The power of five is something that I think makes our partnership with the other schools really special because it allows for enhanced mobility between the campuses for every student, staff and faculty member. We have 30,000 students in the consortium, over 6,000 classes available to you each semester. So good luck picking just the four you need to take every semester. Over 60 languages available at the five college center for the study of world languages and 15 certificate programs. Certificates serve as a minor. So they typically require five classes to complete, but the catch here is you're going to take classes off campus. So it's a great way to get out and about if you want to experience some of the other schools. And you can see right on your screen, a list of the schools with which we partner, Amherst College, Hampshire College, the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, and Smith College. Smith is the other women's college in the consortium. And uh, the great part about this is that you have a free bus system that gets you to each of these campuses. So outcomes, what do you get when you graduate from Al Holyoke? Within 10 years, 75% of our students pursue advanced studies. 97% of our students are employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. And here you can see some pictures of uh, places that they've gone on to work or places that they've gone on to school. And last but not least, I'll share our admission uh, facts. So we have an early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision round. Typically the dates for early decision one are around November 1st and November 15th. And the date for regular decision is around January 1st. But we try not to put those dates on holidays or weekends. So you'll have to check our calendar each year to see exactly when they fall. The next thing you need to know is that we take two types of applications. We are a common application school, but we are also a coalition application school. So if you apply through either, we'll get your application. 
Another big thing to note is that testing is optional and it has been for over 20 years. Mount Holyoke is not test optional just because of the pandemic. We are well versed in how to read applications without standardized test scores. So you don't need to worry if you're not able to test. Also optional materials include an interview, a supplemental essay and also an art supplement. And then lastly, funding and financial aid. 60% of our students receive need-based aid. We are need sensitive, which means we consider how much need you have at the point of admission. But if we admit you, we will give you 100% of the demonstrated need that you have. So you don't have to worry about any gaps in your packaging. You can see our average package this year and the average amount of, of debt over four years for a Mount Holyoke grad. Uh, again, all students are considered for merit scholarship at the time that they apply and they don't need to submit a separate application. So now I think we're at the point of questions. Thank you very much. Um, now that you've heard from all five of our schools, um, we're going to take just a quick few minutes before we wrap, wrap the session up and invite all of our panelists to join me again. Um, and I'm going to pose a question or two uh, and let them go in order that they presented um, and give you guys some cool information and tidbits um, on the college admission process. So the first question I'm going to pose to you guys um, and feel free to answer in the order you presented is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we can start with the University of Aberdeen. Hello, sorry, I'm struggling to get my video started. It's not letting me turn it on. So um, in terms of starting, was it starting the application process? Um, yeah, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? I would definitely say um, give yourself plenty of time. Um, I sort of not long have, have gone through university myself. Um, so in terms of, I mean, and I was only applying in Scotland to a, to a Scottish university. So give yourself that time. Um, and it's also a really good thing just to some people might focus just on maybe rankings or maybe focus on a certain element or aspect of the university. Um, I would say to look at everything as a whole. So look at the student experience. For me, that was a big thing when I was applying to university and I always advise students to look at that when they're thinking about universities. Um, what sort of lifestyle do you want to have when you're, apply, uh, when you're actually studying? What sort of campus do you want to be studying in? Is it an old or a modern campus? Would you like to live um, in a sort of really busy big city or would you like to live in something slightly smaller? Um, more so for, for the UK because we're quite a small country. You might want to think, do you want to live by the seaside or do you want to live but like near London? So that's sort of the thing that I would definitely advise is, is give yourself plenty of time and look at the whole experience of being a student um, outside of the study as well as to what sort of lifestyle you would like to have. For this class in general, um, my biggest recommendation I could give you is to take advantage of all the unique resources that universities are providing to you because of COVID. So obviously we are not happy to be in the situation that we're in, but we can make the best of it. So for example, Clemson has never offered virtual tours before. And now we have those multiple times throughout the day, almost every day of the week. They're still done by two of our current students and tour guides. And while you're not able to be on our campus, it still gives you a great snapshot and overlook of what our university is about and all the resources available to students. And that's not something we've ever been able to have before. So take advantage of all of those unique virtual events that schools are hosting and being able to maybe research and learn more about a school that you wouldn't initially have been able to visit. Yeah, I think my advice as well is actually literally kind of echoing what Morgan has just said. I think right now, so many universities, both in the US and also in the UK, are um, kind of offering lots of great services in terms of not just tours, but also kind of one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions and um, consultation staff, sessions with admission staff or recruitment staff. So I'd say right now, my best advice would be to um, make the most of that while it's here, um, make the most of being able to you know, reach a university hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles away that you wouldn't be able to do anyway. So that would be my advice, yeah, make, make the most of the great um, facilities that are going on right now. I'm going to kind of echo what Morgan and Graham just mentioned, just about the virtual opportunities, but I'm going to kind of focus on really visiting 
um, campuses and visit as many places that you're interested, especially virtually right now while we have those options and those great virtual tours that a lot of our universities are offering. So you kind of get that general feel of what a university is like through that virtual option. And I know a lot of universities are opening some on-campus tours again, and they're slowly starting to do that. I know that we are as well. So definitely check out, you know, the interested uh, universities or colleges that you're, you're looking into and make sure to see if they have those on-campus um, tours again and things along those lines. Like, just really visit as many schools as possible because I can't tell you enough, you're just going to get a feel when you step on campus, whether you know you, you're gonna be there or you belong there or not. So that's just my best advice for you. And I'll wrap us up by saying, uh, take advantage of the different ways that an institution is allowing you to get to know them. So although I mentioned, for example, that Mount Holyoke is um, optional when it comes to interviews, uh, that means that our interview offering is really another opportunity for you to get to know us and for us to get to know you. It won't make or break your application. If you do see that schools offer a way for you to talk to someone who works in their office, who reads your application, for example, I'd say do it, even if it is optional. Uh, because for us, as the readers and as the decision makers, it's going to be really difficult for us to know who exactly is interested in our school. So the, the more attention you show us, the more demonstrated interest for schools where demonstrated interest matters, then I would say take advantage of that. Thank you all for the advice. We're gonna finish up with one last question um, before we end for the night. So the question I have for you, and we'll go in the same order, um, is what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So you guys can quickly share that before we wrap up. Um, so I'll start off my sort of tradition or it's more of a sort of a rumor um on the on the campus itself um, maybe not the most positive one to tell you actually but it's a good one when we do our campus tours we always like to tell students this um, because we have such old buildings um, there is a rumor that if you walk on the green grass in front of king's college which is the oldest building on campus originated from 1495 that you will not graduate. So if you do come and visit us in Aberdeen, um, we will make sure not to, to make you walk over the grass. Um, but that's one of the sort of rumours um, that the university has, that you would not graduate, graduate if you cross that grass in front of the oldest building on campus. So you can see students out on their daily walks going to get a, a coffee between classes, um, swiftly swerving the grass to make sure that they don't jinx themselves. One of my favorite traditions about Clemson is we are one of the top schools for students that purchase class rings. So this is what the girls looks like. Um, but after students reach 90 credit hours, they can uh, get their class ring. There's a big ceremony similar to graduation. And it's just a great way st to stay connected to Clemson. And it's something you keep with you long after graduation. A great story I always like to tell is I had a friend who went to Italy on vacation. She stopped another fellow tourist and was like, hey, can you take, take a picture of my friends and I? And she noticed that the person she stopped had a Clemson ring on. It turned out they were an alumni and now a professor at Clemson. And they never would have made that connection if she hadn't have spotted her ring. So it's just a really nice tradition that we have for our students. And often students are more excited to get their class rings than they are to get their diplomas because that diploma means your time at Clemson has unfortunately come to an end. So I'd say the tradition I like at UEA is um, Derby Day. Uh, so Derby Day is a day of sports where you compete against the University of Essex, um, which is another university in the UK, which is located about an hour and a half from our campus. And um, so, yeah, we have a day of competing with all a variety, variety of different sports against Essex. Um, we've won the last five or six years, so we like to mention that quite a lot because they're one of our closest rivals. But it's a great day. All the students will take part. Students will travel from Essex to UEA and, and cheer on their university. Our students will cheer on our university and it's a great social experience as well as being a great day of sport as well so i'd say that's probably my um favorite um, event that takes place on our campus and then i would say um, my favorite event that we have at temple would be during welcome week and it's called temple fest it's actually a two-day outdoor festival featuring a lot of different music um events as well as a lot of different food including all of our food trucks that we have on campus giveaways, games, and then there's also going to be informational booths that are sponsored by all of our 350 different student clubs and organizations, all of our campus departments and local vendors. So just really a great time for all of our students during Welcome Week to really socialize and get to meet other students um, that they're going to, you know, 
they're coming in with. So definitely Temple Fest would be my favorite event. And I would say that at Mount Holyoke, my favorite event is called Mountain Day. Uh, and it is, what I love about Mountain Day is it's a surprise. So no one knows when it's going to be. And for you as a student, it's also a day off from class. It's not a day off from work for me, but I still get to go outside, have ice cream. We hike a mountain um, and you can hike up the mountain and take a bus back down if you don't wanna walk back down, but it's a great place um, to get up to the summit, to take pictures with your friends, um, to eat your ice cream. Uh, and to just relax, uh, but it's really just a wonderful way for the entire community to come together uh, to celebrate our school's founding and to also have a little, uh, a little element of surprise and mystery since none of us know when Mountain Day is going to be. Thank you all for sharing um, your wonderful traditions and favorite parts uh, about your campus. Um, with that being said, we're going to end tonight's session. So thank you all so much for joining us. When you close out of the window, there'll be a really quick link um, to a four question survey that we'd appreciate your feedback if you can provide it. This is just one of multiple sessions happening tonight. So please be sure to sign up and join some additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings. Thank you all so much. Thank you to our panelists and everyone have a great night.